Well, hi there. Hey, it's Linda Anderson here from Linda Lou Creates. So happy you joined me today. Hey, I wanted to demonstrate two techniques that I thought were fun. Um, actually, maybe three techniques if you count heat embossing as a technique. I'm going to show you um, how to heat emboss and then we're mixing metallics here. So as you can see, the two cards I'm going to demonstrate, we have the split image technique and what I'm calling then the spotlight technique here on this one. It's a mix of the gold and silver and it uses a stamp set that's coming out in the uh, new mini catalog. And here it is, it's called Treasured Medallion gorgeous image right here and that's what I'm going to highlight on these cards today so let's get started I want to actually start with the one that is for the uh, split image so first up the supplies that you're gonna need is your card base and either card um, believe it or not uh, I did cut them both the same uh, that means it's the eight and a half by the five and a half. Normally I like a top folding card and um, this time I just decided to go with the same whether I am doing it in the landscape mode or in the portrait mode. So eight and a half by five and a half that score line is at four and a quarter to get you that fold. Inside is just a piece of Whisper White that is five and a quarter by four and this image I stamped <clears throat> excuse me using one of the images out of that treasured medallion stamp set Knight of Navy ink there. All right, I have a piece of seaside spray. This also measures five and a quarter by four. Now I ran it just to give it a little bit of texture through the Subtles embossing folder. So let me go ahead and get this adhered down to my card base. I'm going to go ahead and use some liquid glue. Whenever I have an image or a piece of cardstock that has been uh, embossed like this one, or uh, whether it's the with an embossing folder or uh, with heat embossing, I like to put some extra uh, adhesive on it. Um, it just has a tendency to be a little warped. Um, anyway. Either way, I just feel like I would, I need to put on some extra adhesive just to make sure it's going to lay nice and flat. All right, so that is taken care of. I'm going to set this aside now. So we're going to do the embossing. So I have that medallion image, sorry for the glare, um, on my Stamparatus. All right, and I have a piece of Knight of Navy, and this is three and a half by three and a half. All right, now I've already set this up so that I have this way when I set this, uh, do them, um, I will have it stamped exactly the same because I'm going to need two of these squares of Knight of Navy, three and a half by three and a half for both of them. Um, I have one already stamped and embossed uh, so that you're not having to watch this twice, but this way, because of this technique, I wanted to be sure that I'm stamping in the same position on all the pieces of cardstock that I put in here. All right, so first up, Versamark ink. It is a stink, sticky ink pad, uh, sticky ink that uh, if left to dry on its own, it does take a little bit of time for it to dry on its own, but it, it leaves almost like a watermark whenever you do that. Um, otherwise, because it does stay kind of wet longer it's great for embossing so I'm just rubbing over that making sure I have it good and covered and it looks like I do now like I said normally I would go ahead and put my second piece of the Knight of Navy down and stamp it just the same with the Versa mark um, but I already have that one done so okay <laughs> so let me bring in a piece of scrap paper because I am going to go ahead um, and like I said, I am mixing the um, metallics on this. So today I am going to go ahead and I'm going to emboss this with some gold embossing powder. And let me get it sprinkled on. So I'm just using some scrap paper 
because I'm going to be able to funnel this powder right back into the jar. So there's no waste. So I like to hit it. And I even from the back like to kind of flick it to try and get all of those little bits off of it. Um, I take a look at it and see if there's any stray flecks anywhere. If I can get at it with my fingernail, I will. Sometimes even a paintbrush will help you to get that off. Um, so I want to make sure I don't have any stray flecks. Let me just set that off to the side while I clean up. So like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and funnel this right back into the jar. All right. Now... If I have any loose powder, uh, which normally you do on your on your work surface, little hint here, I get I cut a piece a Swiffer sheet, and I'm using that to help pick up that any of that powder that uh, kind of got away from me there. So now my work surface is nice and clean. Okay, the next thing you're going to need to emboss to do the heat embossing is a heat tool. Make sure it is a heat tool, not a hair dryer. Um, I'm going to get it started warming up so you're gonna hear sound. <laughs> um, the hair dryer itself will not get hot enough uh, to be able to melt this. Um, I understand back in the uh, previous to getting heat tools invented and, and what have you, that people told me that they used the heat from either a candle or their, their stove. I think that's crazy because I would end up setting it on fire, I think, is what I would end up doing. So, all right. To do mine, I like to have it tilted. What I'm doing with this heat tool is melting this powder, all right? So by tilting it in the light, I can see, I don't know if you can, can you see it now, starting to change. That is that powder melting and bringing out this gorgeous, gorgeous image. All right, let me just turn it around here because it's getting hot. And so this is the technique that I've done on all of, on both cards. All right, so here we go. So isn't that beautiful? I love that with the gold on the dark background. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so now what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to do the second one, which I already have done, in silver embossing ink. So this is how I'm going to mix my metallics. Now what's fun is, you're gonna be able to get two cards out of this. So um, let me show you how, that, how I did that. So, Here's your three and a half by three and a half navy squares. I also have a metallic, this one's silver foil. Um, I've also used on the sample piece, I used gold foil for that. And that measures three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So I just wanted to point that out to you. So now what I'm going to do is cut this in half. And cutting it in half will get me it's uh, one and three quarters is what the halfway mark is. All right, so here we go. I'm going to cut right through the center of this at one and three quarters. So let me bring in my cutting, my trimmer. So one and three quarters. and then one and three quarters. All right, so there it is. So now what I'm going to do is just match these up. Okay, so by matching them up, and like I said, now I actually have two of them that I can do that with. So that's what's gonna be fun with this technique. You can get two cards um, out, of, out of sort of like one, one go through of getting things embossed. So um, that will adhere down to that uh, three and three quarters by three and three quarters piece of the 
silver foil. I already did that here. So, and I put some dimensionals on the back. All right, so see how cool that is where it is together. Yep, you just kind of uh, butt them up against each other and you've got your main image now. So let me bring back my card base that has that seaside spray on it. And let's go ahead and get this adhered down. Now you can put it in any direction, I guess, so to speak, that you want. And so if I wanted it to go this direction, I think I'm gonna go this way. My sample piece, I have the gold on the right. I think this time I'm gonna put the gold on the left. All right, so let's go ahead and adhere that down. Nice, how fun. Now for my next is the sentiment. And this is another fun piece that I'm going to, or a new uh, stamp set that I'm going to share with you. It's a bundle. It's called Art Gallery. Here are the two dies that I used, and um, or that they have rather. I used the longer one, but it does come with the two different sizes. I just, I, I like the edges here. It's just different uh, as opposed to having like a scalloped edge. So from using that stamp set and that die cut Navy, Night of Navy ink I'm thinking of you where I'm going to overlap it on my Na Night of Navy square I'm going to put some adhesive down otherwise I have dimensionals where it extends off okay so if I can just find my there it is <laughs> so a little bit of my glue and also my dimensionals and that way I'm sure it can it will be adhered down I just want to make sure that the dimensionals are all what's going to be on the part that's that is hanging off um, since we've already popped this up this just kind of helps to make it nice and straight going across there okay let's just embellish it real quick with some rhinestones. Uh, they will add even more sparkle to them, uh, to this card. So let me get one of the bigger ones for in the center, especially if it doesn't line up 100% perfect. You can kind of hide that little bit right in there with an, a, uh, a rhinestone. I'm gonna just pop two more on here using my picket tool and this card is complete so there is card number one okay card number two now I am doing it in the portrait mode like I said I, I couldn't decide which way I wanted to go with it so the portrait mode it is so I have the same card base the Knight of Navy eight and a half by five and a half and it is scored in the middle at four and a quarter. I have also then I put that you, you're a treasure. That comes from the treasured medallion set right down here, okay? So I did that on the inside for this one because I'm making it a thank you card. My seaside spray that I have run through the embossing folder, that Subtles 3D embossing folder. Let's go ahead and get this adhered down. And like I said, don't be afraid to put some adhesive on because of that, the texture that's on this. Okay, so let me get that to hold down for just a second. And yes, I have Knight of Navy again. This time I already have embossed everything. Uh, it's I embossed it in gold. The Knight of Navy is that three and a half by three and a half, while my gold foil square back here is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. Okay, so let me go ahead and adhere this down. Then I'm gonna show you what I did to create that spotlight on this one. All right, so. You actually get a chance to do another round of embossing 
pretty fun, especially if you love to emboss. It just having that metallic look, just pretty cool. Yeah, it's very elegant. So all I did was I got another three and a half by three and a half square, but this time I did it in white. So I embossed this time in silver and used some of my layering circles dies and I die cut out the center obviously then of the medallion. Uh, this circle measures one and three eighths. I use then the one and five eighths circle die to cut out a piece of the silver foil sheet, okay? So now I'm just going to go ahead and spotlight that center by layering it up right there using dimensionals. Uh, don't throw this away. I'm going to I'm going to come up with something to use for that. So you'll be seeing this coming up in the future here. Um, I'm like, yeah, this will work perfect for another card. So we're getting all kinds of cards using these two techniques. So it's kind of fun. Dimensionals. Well, let's peel those papers off and attach this down. Now, you don't have to worry about the direction in which you put this. You know, you can put it any way you want, all right? Um, since you're covering up, you're not trying to match any of these swirls and, and, and you know, the uh, detail of the medallion. So just go ahead and put it down in the center. I opted not to put a rhinestone here on the center of this because we've already popped this up. We've popped this up. I was just concerned that yet adding a dimensional was going to make that very thick for me to get it in the mail. All right, now for my sentiment, again, I used uh, from that art gallery stamp set. This time the sentiment is thank you. Normally, you would put it in the smaller of this rectangle strip. I went ahead and I used, once again, the longer one, just like I did on my first card, but this time I stamped it and then I cut off a portion of this strip. I wanted to be able to put some rhinestones there instead. I had to get the rhinestones in somewhere. So that's how I decided to get those included into there. So I'm just going to have this line up with this edge on the right. My rhinestones are already in place. And there we go. The second card, the spotlight card is complete. So here we have the spotlight technique and the split image technique. Both cards mixing the metallics of the gold and the silver, throwing in the blues then too for something fun. Hey guys, uh, if you're interested, I do have a free printable tutorial that goes over both of these cards in case you missed any of the measurements. You can find it down below in the description. While you're there, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Um, I try and post my videos every Friday morning. Uh, this way you would get notification uh, of when a new video gets added. Uh, I have a blog, lindalucreates.com. Uh, there's more projects over there. I even have a newsletter, and uh, you can subscribe to that and, uh, and get my newsletter, too, every week. So, hey, thanks again for joining me today, and I hope you get a chance to create something beautiful. Bye now.